All right, let's dig into rest periods. All right, so Alex, in terms of rest periods, what role do you see these playing in someone's approach to training? And more specifically, how do you use that approach with clients? Yeah, uh, rest periods are going to play a massive role. Shocker, I know. Um, so within rest periods, we talked about it uh, being specific to the training stimulus or what type of response we're looking for within the training. And so depending on if the individual is is having a more strength-based emphasis, we may have a longer rest period. If we have something more hypertrophy-based, it's going to be more of a moderate to potentially long. And then we have potentially that's something more endurance-based that's going to be shorter. We're challenging them from a cardiovascular perspective. So it allows for us to undulate the training to the specific goal that we have. And this is something that we kind of utilize as deloads and something we'll probably touch on within the 201 series of this um, podcast series as a whole is how we utilize them, uh, different training stimuli to not have to necessarily back off entirely, but allow for us to continue to make progress in different facets of how we can progress um, within those three metrics. And so within the rest periods, it's a very valuable tool as well as it keeps the, the client engaged. I think that this is a big thing that many clients run into or individuals who are not our clients necessarily, but they are coming to us and those different factors where they haven't had rest periods prescribed. Maybe it's just been, they've been sent a Word document that has five exercises that is like four sets of eight, four sets of eight, 10 set or four sets of 10 and so on and so forth. <laughs> 10 sets of 10. <laughs> You never know. Uh, you never know. And there's no rest period. There's no tempo. And so it's very uh, up to your, uh, I guess, interpretation. interpretation of what that training means. And so within physique development, we do our absolute due diligence of laying out every possible variable that would be questioned within your training, within the uh, exercise execution. We have the the reps, the sets, the sets to failure, the RPE or the RIR for the sets outside of the set to failure, the tempo allocations, the rest periods. Those are very valuable tools within your training that you need to know to maximize the results that you're wanting to attain. And so within those rest periods, it's just a, a very valuable tool that we use to make it as specific to the individual. And also those rest periods change as we get more data for that person, because we may find that they have a better response within different rest periods, provided that they're following it properly mm -hmm. um, within different types of training. So that's the beautiful thing within physique development is that as we collect more data on the client, it allows for us to get better and better and more specific to that individual. For the individual who I have programmed for for maybe three months relative to an individual like Sue, where I have roughly four years of data collected. Now, the front end of that data is probably not super valuable, right? Mm -hmm. I've gotten much better at programming. She's gotten much better at execution. But I will say that the last year of data, year and a half, is very valuable to be able to see, okay, this is kind of the response that we've had here. This is the kind of progress that we had with the physique photos, the biofeedback. We can make some adjustments and use this as kind of our uh, base to make better programs programming for you specifically. Yeah. And we mentioned this even in the, like what to know as a first time competitor of working with your coach beforehand. And this is one of the reasons for doing that. But within rest periods, I mean, that's exactly how we periodize training is the rest periods are a huge part. If you were to give me a training that like, let's Take, for example, like my last training was neurological training, and now I'm in metabolic training. If you gave me those exact same training layouts and didn't give me any rest periods for them, it's a completely different stimulus, again, up to my interpretation. And so the rest periods also give you a little bit of uh, info on what weight you should be selecting. Because as you go through the different phases, and especially if you are a client of physique development or of the PDTC, that is something that you are seeing, oh, this rest period is two minutes. That means I'm probably doing strength-based work here. So you can use process of elimination to figure that out, but it's also going to be in the name of the training and we are going to send over an explanation, but that can always be a little note to you. And it can also be something that I recommend and we'll have a video coming out on the importance of keeping a training log, but it also helps to know what length of session it's going to be before you even do it, of being able to see, hey, okay, these exercises all have these rest periods in it and I'm going to need to set up for this exercise and this, this, and this. All right, this is roughly going to take me an hour and 15 minutes just straight off the bat. So they can be extremely insightful if you let them be. And if you're neglecting rest periods, you are completely neglecting a whole side of training that might be the reason that you're not seeing progress. Sue's very passionate about that, it seems. 
Uh, I'm passionate about all of the aspects of training that people just will be like, progressive overload, just keep lifting more. Yeah. And it's like that, that's not just what it is. It's not just about lifting more weight. Or I'll have clients that'll be like, well, this session didn't seem that hard. And it's like, well, it if you executed it the way that it was supposed to and the way that I outlined it, then it was going to feel a little bit of a different way. Or I'll have clients during metabolic training saying, I feel weaker. Well, you should, because I don't expect you to be able to lift the same am amount of weight with a third of the rest and more reps, as well as it being a superset. So the more that you can understand that, the more that you're going to not only see progress within training, but the more that you're going to be able to give grace to yourself. Because I used to be like, well, I'm getting weaker. I'm weak. No, I just train, change training stimuli and I have to be aware of these variables. And that gave me a lot of peace within training of having better training sessions because I understood them better. Yeah. And to that point of rest periods that, that Sue just mentioned of, hey, I felt like this session was super easy. And depending on the load lifted based off that rest period could have been super easy. And so my my thing with rest periods and something I tell clients all the time is <clears throat> if you feel as if you don't need to rest in between sets, you didn't use enough load. You didn't use enough intensity in general, right? And intensity going back to, I think episode two of this series, going over percentage of weight used. So the intensity of, of load versus, and the intensity of effort, right? So if you find yourself, there's rest period prescribed and there's a rest period prescribed that's beyond 15 to 30 seconds. So basically not a rest period. It is a rest period, but kind of, you know, not. If there's like a minute long, 75 second, 90 second rest period programmed and you get done with that exercise and you're like, I don't even need a rest period. I'll, I'll just do another set. You did not use enough effort. You did not use enough intensity of load within that set because it's proven because I promise you, as soon as you do use the intensity of load and effort that we're asking of you, you're going to be wishing for a rest period you're gonna ask for longer rest periods. Mm -hmm. You'll be like, hey, this actually sucked. Could I have longer rest period? And it's like, no, because this is the adaptation we're going for. Welcome to the ballpark. Welcome to the game. <laughs> yeah. Now we're playing, you know? So that's the thing with rest periods. If you feel like you don't need one, you need to train harder, point blank. 